Yurko, you've well, is hierarchy biblical? That is the subject today, folks. I got a, a different type of show than I normally do. I I'm going to have a gentleman on. His name is Yurko, and actually, I came across Yurko because he would comment on my videos, and he had some of the most profound comments about hierarchy and even patriarchy, both that he would put in my comments. And I thought, man, this guy writes very succinctly and intelligently on on his, his thoughts on these subjects. And so I thought it'd be a good idea to get him on and, and listen to what he had to say here. Now, Yurko has done quite a bit of study on these topics. He is getting his doctorate in piano, which is pretty cool. And he's also blind. When I first started talking with him on the video chat, I didn't realize that until he finally told me that, oh, wow, okay. So now Yurko has, has done some teaching in his church on hierarchy and on patriarchy. Great conversation here, great teaching that we've got. I was really excited about this and very encouraged by it. Let's go to it. Done some, yeah. some research <laughs> on and some study on uh, hierarchy and that type of thing. And so I wanted to get you on here and, and talk about that. If you want to kind of intro to what, what made you interested in, in studying hierarchy and how, how you see that play out in the Bible and you know, what that, what's written there, go ahead mm -hmm. with kind of how that came about. So first of all, just a bit about, uh, myself. Um, yeah. I, I was bad. I was uh, I became a Christian at 22 years old. So I've been a Christian for about uh, nine years, approximately. Okay. I've always understood uh, what the Bible had to say, uh, generally speaking, about uh, certain uh, hierarch hierarchical structures, mm -hmm. uh, such as uh, husband, wife, and uh, parents and children, and mm -hmm. so on. Yeah. Um, but in, in the last few years, I've focused on this subject in particular, specifically starting on uh, male headship. Yeah. Um, okay. I went I went through a time where I got this. Uh, I, I, I was I was struggling with some personal issues. Yeah, I got in, I got involved in some rather nasty uh internet stuff i t told you about that this this female led relationship nonsense okay. oh um, yeah 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 like uh there's like a movement female led relationship movement yeah yeah i know i'm not sure i'm not sure how prevalent it is in the u.s but it's it's it there's there are enough of them to have a uh, to make their presence known online really uh, okay yeah, I did yeah. look into that a little bit, and I thought, "Wow, this is bizarre stuff here." So, yeah, yeah, no, it's 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 nasty. But anyway, yeah. uh, so as a as a, as a kind of a cure as a cure to that, huh. I decided to uh, really dig into this what the Bible says about um, the headship of the man. Okay, over, that makes over, sense over a woman. So, yeah, uh, that 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 was a few years ago. <clears throat> so I started with marriage. Then it went it went from there to uh, focusing on the the male female hierarchy, which is the which is the one that most people have a problem with. Yeah. Uh, you talk to most yeah. Christians, they'll usually they won't have a problem with. Uh, generally speaking, they won't have a problem with uh, parents and children, government, uh, civil government over citizens. Yeah, um, they won't even have much of a problem with uh, man over nature, mm -hmm. um, but they will have a problem, uh, or, or they'll squirm. Uh, they have they have a squirming problem with the male female, which is strange because it's it's the only hierarchy that Christians in general have a problem with. Again, the the parents children thing we often get problems with that with the whole gentle parenting approach. Uh, mm -hmm. No, no, no corporal punishment and so on. But generally speaking, parents will uh, or Christians will uh, concede that children should uh, obey and um, be under the authority of the parents. Yeah. Um, 
but when it comes to the male female uh, dynamic, then you get you get in trouble. And the other the other kind of hierarchy people have a problem with is the really controversial one of uh, uh, master and slave. Oh we, yeah, we won't, yeah. We won't be talking. We won't be talking about this uh, um, here, but yeah, uh, basically my my own my own position on that has has changed over time. Mm. I used to take I used to take the position well that was just Old Testament regulations, yeah. Uh, when the New Testament, you know, said blah blah blah, but uh, that really doesn't work because um, God doesn't change. Mm -hmm. So if if he if he did not condemn slavery outright in the scriptures, uh, neither should we. You know, so the, the the most basic hierarchy I think we need to establish is a man over nature. Mm. So okay. So you start there. So man, yeah, so man over nature, uh, obviously. Uh, oh, sorry, not, not, not even that. Uh, we need to go before that and, and say this, right? All authority uh, starts with God. So God yeah. alone has sovereign, um, inherent, absolute authority. Right? So all human authority is delegated authority. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if God has not delegated authority to someone, then he does not have that authority. Mm, no, yeah. So, well, all authority is delegated. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And okay. So if they, if it, it, you only have authority if God has delegated it, because God has all authority. Okay? Yeah. So so this is this this was the basis of my a uh, title for this uh, study: God's dele God's delegates. Uh, well, oh yeah, that makes delegates, sense. Okay, yeah, because a delegate, a delegate is a representative, right, <clears throat> of an authority figure, right, that is given plenary authority by that um, by that person or that government. Usually, we use it in, in uh, as an ambassador for a country. A delegate, okay. yeah, but it's a person that's given plenary authority to act in the name of the one who sent him, and he will, of course, have to give an account, right, yeah. to the person who sent him. So that's that's the concept of a delegate. So <clears throat> the authority, the authority is delegated, but it is real; it is actual authority. But the difference between delegated authority and absolute authority is that. A delegate has to give an account to his uh, master, if you will. Right? Yeah, and that's the basis. So, <clears throat> so man over nature is the most basic one, right? We have mm. um, Genesis, uh, Genesis one twenty six, uh, twenty seven, twenty eight, right? mm. when when God says, um, "Let's make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let him have dominion." Yeah, over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and so on. Have the creation right. then, mandate then, yeah. Right, right. So <clears throat> then we have man over nature. Uh, of course, we we immediately go into crosshairs with the world because we have this whole environmentalist movement mm -hmm. uh, that says that man should serve nature rather than, than the other way around. Yeah. Right. Um, Which usually is a very <clears throat> anti-God movement. Well, I mean, I mean, it doesn't always have to be, but it seems like a lot of times they end up being anti-God as well. Yeah. So the the environmentalist thing really goes back to old forms of uh, pagan na nature worship. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, so you 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 get this kind of nature worship in uh, African paganism mm. or uh, Wicca. Or okay. uh, Native American uh, pagan worship and and so on, the worship of nature. <clears throat> By the way, I got an email uh, earlier today from the university uh, inviting students to go and participate in a performance, uh, quote unquote performance at a specific place. I think it's next week, uh, where they're going to. They're going to put, put together this uh, the, theatrical ritual performance of worship to the mother tree. What? Uh, so right. it's, uh, I, I'm, I'm assuming is uh, is uh, it's, 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 it says something like uh, we have um, a mix of movement, art, 
and uh, percussion and spirituality uh, oh. to 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 reconnect with or explore our connection with the land and with one another or something something like uh. that. Yeah, so just more pagan mysticism. Yeah, that's that's nature worship, of course. Yeah, um, you have you have the more modern things about uh, the green movement and and so on, right? Mm -hmm. So so we so we need to lay this down, right? Man is God's delegate over nature, right? So yeah. man man rules nature, uh, not in an absolute way. He doesn't get to do whatever he wants, but. As God's delegate, he has authority to uh, govern nature and, and mold it uh, according to God's instructions. Yeah, right. that's good. And then <laughs> Satan Satan would take that and flip it on its head and say, no, it's nature over man, not what God is actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, that's yeah, good. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah so, yeah, so so that's the first one, right? Then you get so man over that's man in, in general, right? Male and female, yeah. over nature, right? So then we, the next delegate, the next uh, authority, authority, which we see in chapter two of Genesis is uh, male over female. Yeah. Right? So <clears throat> man in general uh, is in authority over nature, but within the human race, if you will, uh, there is also a hierarchy. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, the male is over the female. So Adam is created first, which is deliberate, according to Paul. Right, Paul, Paul yeah. say a teaching from that in First uh, Timothy uh, two. Okay, right? yeah, uh, he he makes or, a point uh, 1 that Corinthians eleven kind of talks about that as well. Yeah, yeah, that that, that also talks as well. So <clears throat> Adam is created first. Right, so the the responsibility for governing creation in in every in every sense, right? Um, uh, the outside world and also the the creation is in uh, his own home, his own family, uh, mm -hmm. is on Adam, uh, on the male. Yeah. Right, and then a uh, woman because she's not named Eve until later, right? Mm -hmm. So woman is created. Uh, to be Adam's suitable helper or help meet, as the old King James uh, translates it. Yeah. Now people, yes. Now people have gotten stuck on this word on this word helper uh, because the word helper is used in different senses in Scripture. So you will get this uh, complementarian yeah. or egalitarian people say, "Oh, you know, helper." Uh, help the Holy Spirit, subordinate, you know, help is the Holy Spirit. Yeah, you know, and, and there's a whole translation issue there. The the word is advocate, it's not helper or, or comforter, but that's mm -hmm. another issue. Uh, so the Holy Spirit or or God is called the help of Israel. So and, and so on. Yeah, it's, and then we can have a nice egalitarian thing if we could just like yeah. say, oh yeah, this is what it is. Yeah, but the problem is just like in Hebrew <clears throat> or just like in any language. A word is defined by its context. Mm -hmm. So in this case, a helper, but a helper with what? And this goes into my, um, I, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself with getting into the patriarchy uh, discussion. Yeah. We'll do but that another video. Yeah, that's going to be good. Yeah, but it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's uh, yeah, but it's, um, it's important to lay this down here. But yeah. helper, helper with what? Helper in context means uh, a helper with uh, the work that Adam has been given. And what is Adam's work? Well, to govern God's creation. Mm. So the help that Adam needs is a delegate. So someone to whom he can delegate some of his responsibilities, right? Because yeah. for, for obvious reasons, uh, governing God's creation is an extremely extensive uh, job that requires that cannot be done by one person. Um, yeah. Well, and and uh, Yurko, he has to have her to help him be fruitful and multiply. Yeah, that too. That too. He yeah. can't accomplish that, that on his own. <clears throat> then, right. Yeah. Now. That. That. Yeah. That. That's true. Also, and that's that's important because um, we 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 view motherhood as an act of sovereignty. We take that from the pagans. It's a very pagan concept, mm. uh, the veneration of the mother, 
right? Oh, in scripture, okay. yeah, in yeah, in scripture, uh, we don't see this veneration of the mother, but rather the the act of childbearing is an act of submission. Uh, she's mm -hmm. bearing fruit. It's it's actually a very agricultural um, metaphor. Uh, she's okay. bearing fruit to her husband. That, that that's why it uses that language. You know, your your the, the normal formula for birth is when you bear his children. Uh, ma, ma, milka, mil, for example, Milka. Mil, it says Milka bore this uh, this child to to Nahor, right? Yeah, it's Nahor, yeah, you're right. It's Nahor, is Nahor's child, but it, it was born to him by uh, his wife. So, so the childbearing is an act mm. of submission. That's a uh, good point. I haven't ever thought of it that way. Yeah. So or, you see or, that or, hierarchy even in being fruitful and multiplying with yeah, the, yeah, you know. mm -hmm. yeah. So it's 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 this, it's this metaphor of planting a seed and getting back a a fruit from that seed. Right. Yeah. The man, the plant, the man plants the seed, right, and and then and then the woman carries that seed as it as it develops, and then uh, returns the seed back to the man who's supposed to lead in raising the child. So the whole the whole concept is that um, the 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 responsibility of lordship, a lordship with a cat with a lowercase l, right. Mm, uh, okay. Lord, or, uh, Lord, as a delegate. Lord, yeah, as a delegate of, of God, yeah. is to govern creation, including his his home, being fruitful and multiply, and the woman is man's delegate, right? Mm. Uh, she submits to him, she obeys him, she works for him, okay, right? specifically in his home. So Titus chapter two, right? A uh, woman's to be a worker at home, and many Galatians either they do one or two things. Either they say uh, she's to be a worker at home, but it doesn't matter if she's not a worker at home, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. She can be a worker somewhere else, um, or, or she's the Proverbs thirty-one woman, which is the ultimate uh, worker yeah. from home, and she has her own business and blah 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 blah. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, ah, yeah, something like that, on. yeah. Or, or the other one, or the other one they try is well, the home is the woman's domain. Mm, yeah. yeah, so you're like the yeah, best part of the home then, or something. <clears throat> yeah, the, the the home is the woman's domain. The man is is works outside, right? The home is the woman's domain, and that yeah. that's not the case. I, I I wrote that in in one of my comments on one of your videos. I remember you right? saying I, that. Yeah. Yeah, so we we need to we need to do something more than just a division of labor. This this isn't simply a division of labor. Mm. This is an issue of hierarchy. So the man is the man's domain is the world and the home, mm. and the woman is the man's delegate or second in command in the home. So male over female, with the female working for the male, right? She receives instructions from him. Mm -hmm. uh, she she must be taught by him. He he has the responsibility to teach her the the word of God. We see this in Genesis, where Adam receives the instructions regarding the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Uh, Eve does not. Okay, uh, yeah. implying that Adam was supposed to teach Eve uh, mm. about about that. Right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we also see this authority in the fact that Adam names. Eve, right? So, so the context of the creation of woman is God is having Adam name the animals, mm. right? So he he's got Adam naming animals. Then in the middle of that, he puts him to sleep. He creates a woman from his from his rib, and yeah. then she bring he brings her to him. And what has he been doing? He's been naming animals. So what does he do? He names her. He names her Isha, which means woman. Right, in Hebrew, because she was taken out of Ish, meaning man. So her name is Isha. Right. Mm. Uh, later on, later on in in Genesis three twenty, Adam names names her Hava uh, or Eve in English, mm. uh, which means uh, living or or the mother of all the living, something along those lines. Yeah, so, mother of the living. Yeah. Okay. So so Adam names Eve. If you look at it, even today, if you name something, it shows that you have authority over it. So, so God's having Adam name the animals, 
mm. exercising this uh, dominion or authority. Mm. And then he brings Eve to Adam to name her, also showing that Adam has dominion over Eve, right? who's, who's different from the animals because she shares his nature, but is still subordinate to him. So we shouldn't be surprised right, when Paul tells uh, wives to submit to their husbands, or mm. when he says that uh, men should be um, elders in the church. He, he's, simply, he's simply applying this general principle uh, to different spheres. Right. This is yeah. This is the created order that God has set up. That, yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, now I wanna I wanna I wanna mention this because it's an argument from some um, some more some even some conservative uh, people will say this. They'll attribute uh, the hierarchy of male over female to the fall. Yes. So, so they'll, I've heard they'll, that. They'll, yeah. Yeah, so they'll make a beeline for Genesis 3.16 and say, see, here, here God's saying that as a result of the fall, mm. uh, before the fall, you had egalitarianism, uh, you yeah. had mutual submission. But after the fall, right, you have uh, patriarchy, the male ruling over the female. But that, that, that's not the case because you see, you see hierarchy before the fall. Yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, you, see, you see it in, in Genesis 2. Uh, Paul has a lot of things to say about about Genesis two in First Corinthians eleven and also yes. in First Timothy two. Yeah, it's not it's not a result of the fall. What is a result of the fall is this conflict, All right? So um, the same the same uh, phrase that's used here: uh, your desire shall be for your husband, and she shall rule over you. Yeah, All right. It's used a few verses later about Cain and his sin. Yes. It says, uh, its desire is for you, and you must rule over it. Mm. So the idea is not that the woman will have uh, a great desire for her husband. There's nothing sinful about that, yes. right? That, that's what should happen. But what is what is a result of the curse is that her desire will be for, that is, uh, a contrary to her husband. The ESV, I think, translates it that way. Uh, yeah. It's more, more, more direct, more direct translation of the idiomatic phrase here, where he's saying that because of sin, because the influence of sin, women will tend to want to use uh, control their husbands or usurp usurp their authority. That, that that's what the result of the curse is. This mm. this conflict, this this power, this power the uh, power struggle between males and females. And I've I've talked about that on a bunch of my videos that it, when I'm going going through some pastors preaching on this topic and and it's usually the view is like if men would just lead better then women would submit to them. And just like you're saying, I take it back to, well, no, that's that's part of the woman's curse is that she will not, yeah, yeah. the natural woman and her fleshly desires will not want to submit to her yeah, yeah. to her authority, her husband. That, that's the result of the rebellion, right? That's the result yeah. of sin as it, as it permeates society is you get this uh, rebellion from women, mm -hmm. right? Or you also get... Um, you also get abusive, abusive patriarchs. So, so I have to mention this because mm -hmm. it's important, right? To, to mention, even though it's not the headline, right? You do, you do have the um, idea of men, right, uh, abusing the authority or going beyond the authority, or yeah. or using the authority in a sinful way, right? Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. that, that's also that's also a consequence of sin. But it doesn't change the hierarchy, right? God says he will rule over you. The hierarchy will not be changed. It will not be removed. So we've got yeah, so, God over man, man over nature. Male over female. Male yeah. over female. Yeah, and then we got parents over children. Parents over children. Yeah. I don't think anybody yeah. has too much of a problem there unless you're... Going yeah, crazy. you 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 might have a you might get a bit of pushback when you get to the practical applications of what that means, mm. right? Uh, okay. So the, uh, the there's a lot of debate over uh, what the, what the rod is in in proverbs, right? You get these gentle parenting types that say no, it's just oh. it's just a shepherd shepherd's crook, you know, it's 
it's uh it's 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 a symbol for the word and and so on. Of course, how you're supposed to beat how you supposed to beat someone with the word? I don't know. <laughs> Explain that one to me. Yeah, yeah uh, I'm a I'm a father of five. So that that that's usually the 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 pushback you get over over um hope or punishment. But generally speaking, they they'll concede right that parents have authority over the children. Mm. Uh, children should should generally obey obey their parents and and so on. Of course, we got uh we do we do have some rather um. We we know the classic text, right? Ephesians six four. Oh, sorry, Ephesians six one to three, right? Mm. Um, children obey your parents in the Lord, and so on. Yeah, uh, which is different from honor your father and mother because you just do all of your life, but you don't obey them all of your life, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and uh, and then fathers are to uh, raise the children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Right? Yeah. Um, but there's there's a uh, there's an interesting passage in Leviticus where it uses a well, a lot stronger word here. Hmm. Uh, Leviticus nineteen three says um, in the Old King James, right? It says, "Thou shalt fear every man his father and every man every man his mother and every man his father." Mm. Right, so <clears throat> that's more than obey, right? Okay. Obviously, he's talking. Obviously, he's talking to children uh, there, but it yeah. says fear. Uh, uh, the the same word is used for uh, fearing God, fearing of the Lord. Right? Yeah, okay. So you're to fear your parents, and in Ephesians five thirty three, kind of going back to the male female thing, you get to wives. This every 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 woman see that she fear her husband. Yeah, right? yeah. The word the word there is phobia, uh, which where we get a word phobia. You no, know, most modern translations translated respect. Yes, res it or reverence, it respect or reverence. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, reverence works. Reverence works as well. But the, the word is fear. We get this very countercultural use of this very strong word. Yeah. Uh, for how children are to regard their parents and how wives are to regard their husbands, mm. right? Uh, it's just the same word for a uh, fear or a reverential awe uh, that you're supposed to have for God. Wow. Uh, obviously, in, in a lesser sense, because it's human, but yeah. it's, it's the same well, word. It's the same word. So parents over children, that's, uh, so that's another one. So that's part one on biblical hierarchy. I'll do a second part to this and continue the conversation. This is good stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And it's really good to know what scripture says about hierarchy. And we got to get this, you know, turned around. I think today it's just egalitarian, equal, 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 equal stuff, which is not what scripture really supports. So we got to get that turned around because Christ is winning. He is building his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Until next time, this is the Post-Millennial Man.